Thank you, councillors, members of senior staff, and the, the press and the clergy. Warm welcome to you all for the August meeting of the Morrisshire Council. I'm glad the meeting opened. And I am really, really pleased, as I know council are, that uh, we have in the chamber today, or in the supper room rather, <laughs> Uh, today, Auxiliary Lieutenant Caleb Smith from the Salvation Army, who uh, also uh, is a member, of course, of the Christian Leaders Group of Tamora. It is tremendous to have you uh, have you with us. Obviously, with uh, this wretched COVID situation, uh, we haven't been able to have uh, our Christian leaders represented here, but we have had Councillor Winky and Councillor Slay that have alternated with delivering our opening prayer and it's, uh, uh, it's been great. So um, we do welcome you and we'd ask you to lead us in our opening prayer, please. Heavenly Father, we think back to this time last year when we were praying for an end to drought. So we give you thanks for full dams and green fields. Um, slightly less full dams would be great. Thank you, dear God. Um, we thank you also that uh, COVID has well, not reached more of it. Our schools, our nursing homes, our hospital, our doctors too, are all uh, safe from that and help us to, well, keep it that way. Uh, dear God, as we meet under circumstances that would be completely unimaginable even six months ago, we pray that you bless and guide all the decisions that are made here to get, today. Uh, the people that are gathered here, I pray that you give them, well, wisdom, courage, and a whole lot of really good ideas. These we pray in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much indeed. You are welcome to stay. <laughs> I'm going to go sort some kids out. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it could be less challenging. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, Councillors, let's uh, now go to apologies. And we do have an apology from Councillor Reinhold. And uh, Councillor Reinhold, she's obviously running around uh, in a very caring and loving way with, uh, with her family and uh, uh, so our thoughts are with her. Uh, but, uh, there is an apology from Councillor Reinhardt. It's on to move that we accept that Councillor Slay, Councillor Smith move the second. All those of that opinion, please say aye. I'm to declare the motion carried. Thank you. Any declaration of any interest, councillors, at this point? I just have one... Uh, in relation to the Town Hall Theatre letter, which uh, my mother is the manager of the Town Hall Theatre, and the Deputy Mayor will take the chair at that time. Uh, thank you, Councillors. If we could please uh, have a motion to confirm the minutes for our July meeting of tomorrow's Shire Council, please. Councillor Winky, the Deputy Mayor, moved and seconded. All those of that opinion, please say aye. No. Contrary matter, clear the motion carried. Thank you very much. Any matters arising, Mr. General Manager? No. No, thank you. Uh, Councillors, let's now go on to the mayoral minutes, uh, which you have a copy on your, on your desk. During this ongoing and very challenging time of COVID 19, I realise only too well how significant adjustments have been made by both Tamora Shire Council and our Shire community. New South Wales are doing relatively well, all things considered, with just over 3,900 cases, a pleasing 2,992 recovered with an unfortunate death rate of 52. Nationwide, figures are 23,773 cases, which were 14,924 recovered and 463 who have sadly passed away. On behalf of Tamora Shire Council, together with our community, I extend our thoughts and prayers to all those who have lost loved ones. All of us continue to hope and pray that a legitimate vaccine is found sooner rather than later. I again applaud Tamora Shire Council as our staff and our community for the manner in which they continue to observe the New South Wales Public Health Orders and our police force for enforcing them. It must be heartbreaking for our community to have to cancel various social, sporting and cultural events. We're all people who enjoy circulating with each other and we miss this terribly. 
I will also add that overall, I believe leadership has served Australia well during this pandemic. All the leadership teams at Commonwealth, state and local levels have all worked well together and put aside political differences for the greater good. And for this we say thank you. Our lives will return to some form of normality, but it will take time. And please let's continue to support and encourage each other in whatever ways we possibly can which is the Tamora Shire Way. But to counsel, counsel together with our Shire community, reflect on the recent 75th anniversary of victory in the Pacific Day, so known as VP Day, and also Vietnam Veterans Day. An intimate commemorative service was held on Sunday the 16th of August at the Cenotaph, and <clears throat> with ex men from various conflicts in attendance with loved ones there in support. How heart-rendering it was to particularly see World War II veteran Mr Bill Harris standing proudly. The inspiring and sprightly 95-year-old has been honoured today by featuring in an episode of Tamora Shire's Homegrown Heroes. What a most appropriate subject is Mr Harris. I was honoured to have laid the wreath in honour of both the VP Day and Vietnam Veterans Day, ably assisted by former mayors Mr James and Mr Spears. Council and the Shire community pay tribute to every single ex-service man and woman who have had and continue to have the courage to defend our great nation. And the General Manager, Mr Lavelle, held <coughs> the performance review with the panel last week. The report is furnished to Council in closed session. What must be said in the public arena is how blessed Tamora Shire is to have the General Manager of the calibre of Mr Lavelle. He is highly regarded within the Shire, the region and our state. And I place on record Council's warm thanks to our General Manager for his outstanding service and we look forward to another productive 12 months ahead. That's very serious. <laughs> Some may be aware, Tamora Shire Council have long advocated for a first-past-the-post voting system in our council election. Successive governments have not been interested in adopting this approach for many and varied reasons. In a recent meeting with the New South Wales Shadow Minister for Local Government, Mr Greg Warren MP, we again made the suggestion. Mr Warren was most receptive of the idea and invited us to write to him to formalise our position. Uh, I propose that we write to the Riverina J.O. Uh, asking the board to consider advocating a first-past-the-post voting system as an option, as an option being the option for, for New South Wales councils to adopt for their four yearly council elections. And the recommendation is uh, to that end, but further that a copy of the correspondence is sent to the Minister for Local Government, the Shadow Minister for Local Government, the Local Government New South Wales President and the Country Mayor's Association Chairman for their information. And finally, Councillors, Saturday the 12th of September is the day that Tamora Shire Council, together with our community, will honour one of our outstanding citizens. Mr Peter George James will receive the highest honour, that being the Freedom of the Shire Award. Mr James was an alderman of the Tamora Municipal Council and also its last Mayor. Mr James was also elected as a councillor to the then newly merged Council of Tamora Shire, being elected as its first president from 1981 to 1985. Mr James is a third generation Mayor of Tamora with both his father, the late E.T. James, and his grandfather, the late J.E. James, also holding the position. This award is obviously a very rare honour with only five other inductees, which include in 1991, the number 10 elementary flying training schools, 50th anniversary reunion personnel. In 1996, Mr. Ronald George Maslin and Mrs. Ellen May Maslin. 2002, Mr. Leslie Gustav Schultz, OAM. 2008, Mr. Brian Henry Carlefeld, OAM, and Mrs. Joy Winifred Carlefeld. And in 2016, Tamora Aviation Museum. Mr James will be the sixth addition to be inducted to this time honoured award. 
I know Mr. James, together with his wife, Mrs. James, and their family, are very much looking forward to this special occasion. And councillor's recommendation is there that uh, the recommendation is presented be adopted and the remainder of the report is noted, and I will move that way. Is there a second for the motion, please? Councillor Oliver, thank you. Moved and seconded. Further discussion? Councillor Judd. Oh, I just support the uh, <coughs> motion about the uh, voting system, We're trying to get it through. We've tried similar motion to the past at Shires Conference. Uh, as you say, the wording is the, the option of the voting. Uh, we'll have got political parties and larger councils are always going to insist on that proportional system of voting and they uh, won't suit the party system, but uh, especially in uh, rural councils, I think the uh, first past the post is uh, the most appropriate way to go. And uh, you know, just supporting the uh, recommendation. Thanks very much, Councillor Judd. And I think uh, certainly it is reflective of what our community uh, can see. Uh, is, uh, Certainly, the way that I see it. Councillor Slade. A question, please, Mr. Mayor. Um, have the previous unsuccessful motions been uh, qualified in this way that it be an optional process? Well, no, uh, thanks, Councillor Slade. Uh, it's sort of, uh, I, I don't recall, <laughs> Councillor Judd, you may recall, but I don't recall that term optional uh, being in there, but it may have been. So it actually make a massive difference. Exactly. On party lines, yeah. Exactly. Especially the last one we put up, did have the word optional. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. Didn't that is the mind. operative word, and that's what Mr. Warren particularly was keen uh, to see was um, is that word, because he, he understood that you know uh, rural councils and, and some regional uh, are not party political at all, so therefore couldn't see any reason why, if they wanted to go down that path, they couldn't have done it. So, uh, thanks, Councillor Slay. Any further discussion on the motion? If not, I'll put the motion. All those have been in the SRI. Right. Contrary, no. The motion is carried unanimously. Thank you. Uh, Councillors, let's go to our business paper on page 11, the, the Emergency Management Committee meeting. Uh, General Manager, you had a, a comment in relation to this uh, the Council well, to consider. Uh, not as such, Mr Mayor. I've, uh, I am going to check out whether this should come to Council to a meeting or whether it just be uh, distributed to Council because it's it's really not a Council committee as such. So we, we did seek uh, clarification of that some time ago, but um, as I'm aware, we have <coughs> we don't have a, a, you know, a an answer to it uh, or a definitive answer to it. Yeah. Thank you. So we'll just treat it uh, as we normally have done. Yes. Councillor, happy with that. Uh, so, Councillor, someone prepared to move that we receive the Emergency Management Committee meeting report. Councillor Winkley, Councillor Oliver, move and second that all those of that opinion, please say aye. Aye. Contrary, no. We have a motion carried. Thank you. So, the report's there for your consideration. I don't know whether uh, we have. Anyone that sits on that committee present? No. <laughs> job, but we can take them on notice, councillors, if there is any. Council Oliver. Thank you, Is the general manager suggesting that this comes as part of the information paper or something distributed by the hub? Uh, um, thank you, the general manager. Yeah, the, the question is whether it is actually a, uh, a document that needs to be ratified by council. If it doesn't, um, it can go straight on to the, the hub. Uh, the council have a read on uh, rather than actually uh, moving a motion to accept it. But we will check that. Thank you. Uh, any other items or, or comments, councillors? If not, is someone prepared to move uh, the Emergency Management Committee meeting report and its recommendations? The Deputy Mayor, Councillor Slay, moved and seconded. Uh, no further discussion. If not, I'll put the motion to you. All those of that opinion, please say aye. Contrary, no. Clear the motion carried. Thank you very much. <coughs> Pardon me. Councillors, let's go to page 23, the Access and Equity Committee meeting report. And someone move that that be received. Thank you, Councillor Winkie. 
Councillor Smith, move the second of all those without opinion, please say aye. Promptly no. Further motion to carry. Thank you. Uh, the report is there, councillors, for your comments or questions. Councillor Slade. Uh, a question, Mr Mayor. I think I must have missed the election. Uh, on page 23, I see that apologies from Councillor Craig Warren have been accepted. Is this is a move that I've missed out on? <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Slade. That was, uh, has been raised with <laughs> the general manager uh, fairly quickly. <coughs> I think actually there are two issues there, uh, uh, Councillor Slade. One is obviously not a councillor, uh, but the second thing, as I, as I understand, he's not a member of the committee yet, so as such, there's no need to apologise as such. So, but we'll uh, we'll do that next. Time. <coughs> Thank you, Councillor Slade. Anything else, councillors, out of that report? Just the one I notice in in. Uh, Business arising on page 75, number two, what Councillor McLaren raised about the entrance stairs into our Memorial Hall uh, with a further hand run. Of course, I, like Councillor McLaren, also thought that may be worth uh, considering. But in the bold text, it, it looks like that it's the works that will be carried out. Now, I just wondered, uh, the director, we did speak the other day, uh, did we get that clarified in relation to that particular? Text. Uh, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, no, that wasn't actually the resolution of council. The actual meeting was held after the minutes were taken, so that's a minor anomaly. Okay. Um, but you know, I'm interested in councillors' feedback on at the front. Um, we had two councillors requested. Um, we have got two handrails there. Um, interested if you think we need a third one um, and a range um, Thank you. At a cost, councillor Slade. I hope the cost is not excessive. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, it's just that I fell there the other day and I thought, but, but I was arrogantly walking up the middle of the steps and I think it might have been a combination of slippery shoes and wet paws, but uh, it just seemed to me to be a good idea. Thank you. It's a wider space than, yep. than normal between two handrails. Thank you. Councillor Smith. Yeah, I believe it's a good idea too because uh, quite a few years ago, one of the elections here there was a lady, and of course it was a different set of steps, but the same type of configuration around the corner, and the lady fell over, flew the head open, and had to get the ambulance for her. It wasn't nice, you know, because there's a lot of kids and stuff there. But I just think for safety reasons, I'd like to see a hand right away. Thank you. I know, uh, Councillor Oliver. Yes, I agree. It does need something there to define where the thing is. It's, you get sort of blinded by it, but the same effect of it. That doesn't define properly, so it should be, <coughs> should be a rather definitely. Thanks, uh, Councillor Oliver. I, yeah, I, I was of two minds in this. I initially was keen, and then when we had come over and had an inspection, the director and I and sort of explained that they can go to the side rails if, if they choose to. Um, so I sort of started to, to question whether you know, it was uh, necessary, but again, there seems to be general support. Other councillors, Councillor Winky, do you have a view? Or? Oh, I, I definitely do something. Yep. Okay, thank you. The Deputy Mayor? I, well, I guess so. I went, I went, I went, like the saying, you can leave a horse in the water, but you can't make a drink. You can have all the, have all the um, <coughs> things there you want. Doesn't mean to say people are going to use them. Yes, uh, Councillor, sorry. Yeah, all the hand marks and things. Right there, people choose not to use them, they fall over. Or... <laughs> he means that caring the councillors. <laughs> I would hope you would. <laughs> I would assume you would. <laughs> uh, thank you, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Councillor Judd, do you have a position? Or... So, uh, obviously, the majority of councillors are, are supportive of it, but uh, do we have an approximate dollar value, uh, please? $1,500. So, councillors, uh, well, actually, we probably need a motion. And that would come out of what, maintenance or? Yeah. Okay. Happy. Councillor Smith. Move the motion. So, you'll move that uh, council install a further handrail. 
on the appropriate position, position uh, on the steps of the Tamora Memorial Town Hall. Thank you. Thank you. Second, Councillor Winky. Moved and seconded. Further discussion? If not, I'll put the motion. All those without opinion, please say aye. Aye. Contrary, no. Clear the motion to carry. Thank you very much. So, councillors, there is the report and the recommendations there for access and equity. Is someone prepared to move the report and the recommendations contained? Councillor McLaren has moved that way. Second, Councillor Winky. Moved and seconded. Is there further discussion? Not. I will put the motion to you. All those of that opinion, please say aye. Aye. Country no. Say the motion carried unanimously. Thank you. Very much. Now, we go over to page 80, the Youth Advisory Committee report, and Councillor Slade is the chair. Thank you very much, Mr Mayor. A normal, very, very good meeting of the Youth Advisory Report, of the Youth Advisory Committee, and again, the material that is presented to the council members uh, is always rich and exciting. Rich in the sense that there's a great variation. Exciting in that the young people of Tamora Shire are obviously being held somewhere very, uh, they're, they're being exposed to something very worthwhile. And so, with pleasure, I ask that the uh, report be, accepted, be noted. Thank you. So you move that we receive the report? And the report Thank be you. received, sorry. Thank you. Second, Councillor Smith moved and second. All those of that opinion, please say aye. Aye. Uh, contrary, no. Clear the motion carried. Uh, now, we go to the report. Councillor Smith? I just think for people, for kids to come down from West Wyalong and kids to come over from Cootamunda, what's it say about tomorrow? It says that, you know, no better place to be. <laughs> And I, I'm sure uh, our fellow councillors in their neighbouring centres would <laughs> somewhat agree. But Councillor Smith, I, I appreciate what you're saying. I know I probably have a, have a little bit of a differing view, but at the same time, um, uh, if, if that's uh, something that council's uh, happy with, then that's great. Councillor Slack. Thank you. Uh, we were given a very good presentation by Melissa Carter, the youth worker. Uh, three things stood out in that particular presentation. I'd like to draw your attention. One of them, and we were looking at slides, we were looking at, we were listening to singing, we are doing a number of things in Melissa's presentation. Uh, things that stood out, with the tremendous amount of enthusiastic participation by the young people from age eight upwards. The attention to future planning, this is the thing that I think has really excited me. The leaders and the members themselves are not only thinking about what will they do during this holidays, they can tell you what they're going to do during the next holidays and the Christmas holidays because they're thinking a long way ahead. And the other point that is very obvious to anybody who has anything to do with the group is the high quality work of the youth worker and her team, including the very generous mentors, these people who are coming and teaching people to sing, teaching people to cook, teaching people to do the very play games, like play computer games and so on. That is magnificent. It's a pity that the role of the youth office uh, hasn't been filled yet. But I think that the current activities are a great reflection on the work that Kim Sandrum and her team did before Kim left. And just to pick up on the point that Councillor Smith mentioned was made by participation by some young people from outside the Shire, and so the question was naturally raised, should they be charged for attending? After consideration, and I, I think each of us has thought about it, I would suggest that any decision about whether or not uh, these matters be these uh, strangers, these visitors, these pilgrims to the better place, uh, about the, whether they pass, whether they should have to pay anything. I suggest that a decision be deferred until we see these patterns over a longer time. I mean, it was interesting that there were four or five people who came from outside the Shire. Uh, let's see if it is a trend that's going to continue. Uh, and also the leaders did ask that they be given time to discuss it. Uh, I think we should hear their views uh, and then maybe in three or four months' time it might come back to council. That is simply, that's not a regular, oh, that's, that's a suggestion uh, in the light of the comments that Councillor Smith made. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor Slay. I think council would be happy if, with, with that approach, I would assume. Yep, so if we just take that as um, general consensus. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.
Thank you. Uh, so nothing else to add, Councillor Slay, in relation to the report? No, thank you. No. Thank you. Councillors, the report is there of the Youth Advisory Committee with recommendations uh, for your consideration. Councillor Smith, so you'll move that we adopt the report with recommendations. Thank you. Second for the motion, please. Councillor Oliver, moved and seconded. No further discussion? Not. I'll put the motion. All those of that opinion, please say aye. 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 Contrary, no. We have the motion carried. Thank you very much. Let's go to page 90, Councillors, the, uh, the Assets and Operations Committee report, and the Deputy Mayor is the Chairman. The report be received. Thank you. Second for the motion. Councillor Winky moved and seconded all those. Of that opinion, please say aye. 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 Contrary, no. The motion carried. Thank you very much. Deputy Mayor, do you have anything you wish to highlight? Uh, not this stage. Thank you. Councillors, your comments? Uh, if there's no further comments or queries, uh, there is the Assets and Operations Committee report and recommendations contained therein for your consideration. Councillor McLaren. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Just a clarification on 3.5. Uh, the resolution says to staff to prepare a draft lease and report back to Council. Was that sorry, a, um, to speak up a little bit. Oh, on 3.5, uh, in the resolution, just in number two, it says, and further, staff to prepare a draft lease and report back to Council. Do you know what you're, are we going to present options for that lease or have you got some determination what it should be like or what were you thinking? So thanks Councillor McLaren. The, to the Director of Environmental Services. We, uh, Mayor, our um, solicitor has a standard lease document that we yeah. use the basis. Uh, at the meeting I did get the general feel that we wanted to cover amount yeah. of depreciation around that 1,000 to yeah. 1,500 uh, Per annum was the, the figure, so that's what I intended to include in the draft for Council's consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Council happy with that? That's my understanding. So. Thank you. Uh, Councillors, if there's nothing further, there is uh, the report and recommendations there, so I'm not prepared to move their adoption. Councillor McLaren, thank you, Councillor Oliver. Moved and seconded. No further discussion? Not, I'll put the motion. All those of that opinion, please say aye. 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 Country, no. <coughs> Declare the motion carried. Thank you. Uh, Council, page 175, the Economic Development and Visitations Committee report. I'm the chairman of that committee, and is someone prepared to move that the uh, report's received? Thank you, Councillor Slade, the Deputy Mayor. Move the second. All those of that opinion, please say aye. Aye. Country, no. Thank you. Uh, Councillors, you'll see um, a very, very busy <laughs> Economic Development Visitations uh, Committee meeting, uh, and our Economic Development Manager certainly, uh, I mean, this is just a small sample, of course, of what, what's going on, as you're aware, but uh, it, it is very, very exciting. And uh, the committee were impressed, Councillors, the fact that. Um, there was this survey conducted about the retail hours. Now, whilst you know some may not thought it was a good idea, and obviously the survey results there were certainly there for you to see. I think it was appropriate that that, uh, that, that study was undertaken, and um, with 187 responses, you know that's not too bad. So uh, I, I commend uh, well, TBEG and all involved uh, with that. I know the committee. Were, Certainly pleased. Uh, <clears throat> but councillors, uh, other than that, that is um, the report and the committee had some recommendations there for council to consider. Councillor Slade. Thank you. Um, as the Mayor has indicated, there are a great number of topics that were raised and very, very different topics. One that I'd like to draw your attention is 3.2 welcoming cities. Uh, and here the idea is that as part of the regional resettlement pilot program run by <coughs> Multicultural New South Wales, uh, it is hoped that each child will be able to, in a sense, discover the stories of the migrants, of the 
people who are resettling in our communities. And I certainly commend that as being a, a great um, uh, a great initiative. It means that we have to find ten thousand dollars, as I understand it. Well, I understood that it was for, to be funded. The Sorry, understanding. It was to be funded. That might be funded by the. Thank you. I couldn't yeah. quite clarify that. So that, that's good. If that's the case, that's even better. We get it for nothing. Um, but so they're looking for a facilitator who would go around and engage, as it says on page one hundred and seventy-seven, uh, interviewing local residents from migrant backgrounds to understand what attracted them to, to Tamora Shire. And just my own experience in dealing with parents who travelled to Tamora Shire from overseas countries, there are some fascinating stories, really fascinating stories. Uh, and I think that we sometimes pick these up also at the, uh, um, the Welcome to the Town, Welcome to Tamora uh, function each year. So uh, some of them go back to my fam and some of them come up to people who've only moved in this year but between them. So I just really draw that to your attention and hope that it will go ahead. Uh, as for the retail trading hour survey, as the Mayor said, uh, we'll have to see just now what happens. Uh, but it was good to see the sort of responses that, that came in. Um, and also as a Big schooly, I'm certainly very excited by three four the support for school leaders. This is an initiative of Ian Corby, uh, who was and is again uh, the careers advisor. I think that he has rejoined the staff uh, up at the high school and he's looking at ways in which students leaving 10, 11, and 12 are given some sort of support. So, really, really exciting thing. So, like the economic development officer has a lot of roles. But just looking at those three roles, I think he's excelled himself. So uh, it's exciting from our point of view as, as councillors and as residents of tomorrow. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Slay. And yes, you're quite right. The, uh, the School Leavers Program is excellent. I, I'm very proud because this is the, the uh, council, how this come out is that, if you recall, that we had council facilitator meeting with, with principals and, and with other. Uh, key players uh, within the Shire community uh, and uh, just by simply being in the chamber talking how can we help each other uh, here is something that is just potentially so exciting so uh, we, we do thank our manager but we thank all involved uh, in, uh, in making uh, it possible to where we are today. So thank you very much. Uh, councillors, there is a report and recommendations. Someone prepared the move that they be adopted. Thank you, Councillor Slade, Councillor Smith. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Oh, I'll put the motion. All those of that opinion, please say aye. Come to know. Declare the motion carried. Thank you very much. Now, let's go to, you should receive Councillors a late report, which is the Aerodrome Users Committee report. You all have, uh, have that. And Councillor Judd, is the chairman. <coughs> Thanks, Mr. Mayor. <coughs> well, the uh, special aerodrome users meeting on uh, Monday evening. Uh, it's the first stage of consultation. Uh, uh, there were two things. To, uh, uh, as Council might remember, we uh, adopted the Air Forward Master Plan early in 2019, and uh, the two things were coming out of that. And we're ready to uh, commence public consultation on the, on the 40 air park estate lights on the land formerly known as the sign yards. So we were looking for uh, comments and feedback on it. And the second part uh, is the uh, part of the master plan is trying to attract pilot training operators as a, as a key focus of our strategy as well. <coughs> now, we had a very good uh, meeting with the Aerodrome Users Delegates and you can see on page 11 uh, the Economic Development Manager he presented his report but then we got a, some feedback a number of items there on the uh, uh, what we call the sale yards estate and the second part on uh, the feedback on the, any possible flight training school and uh, I'll just leave it there I'll move the report be received. Thanks Councillor Judd. Second of the motion please. Councillor Winky moved and seconded further discussion. 
All those in favour, please say aye. Okay. No. Declare the motion carried. Uh, anything further to add at this stage, Councillor Judd? Oh, no, as I uh, indicated before, it's, uh, I thought having a briefing with the delegates first is a good first step in uh, our public consultation. And uh, I think uh, it showed the other night just you know, we've got some very experienced and knowledgeable delegates on our committee. And uh, I think it's great when we can uh, take all their knowledge on board and take their advice and any concerns I have as well. And uh, you can see already that thing with the design of the estate, you know, that brought up about maybe the, you know, the runways or the taxiways needs to be a bit wider in different places to facilitate passage of gliders or aeroplanes. And, um, you know, I think our uh, technical managers have taken these ideas on board. So it's, it's good to see. Thank you. Councillor Judd, I endorse your uh, comments in relation to it. I think it was very uh, worthwhile. I think uh, there was some genuine and honest uh, assessments and, and feedback and, uh, and every single individual that was present, uh, to your credit, Councillor Judd, that uh, you led a very good meeting, involved everybody uh, in the discussion, so I commend you for that. I warmly commend our economic development manager, I thought he particularly was uh, on his the game uh, as well and, and talking in layman's terms uh, and of course uh, our other directors and staff uh, managers that were present uh, to give up their time uh, as well to, uh, to listen uh, and to learn. A very crucial part uh, of, of this journey as well. Uh, thank you. Further uh, discussion? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. As you said, as uh, Councillor Jad has pointed out, we were given the opportunity to hear from people who really knew what they were going on. There were five people from the uh, airport. They were sitting there like, I was going to say, five wise monkeys. That's it, totally inappropriate. Five wise men. They were all men. Uh, and just the answers that they gave to so many of our questions, I think, were informative, certainly to me as a councillor, I found a great deal to, that I learned. And I wonder, Mr Mayor, if consideration could be given to calling that same star-studded cast back at some stage in the fairly near future to just talk to all of the councillors because there were issues raised there that so far in what is the most important decision that we, have, that we are likely to make in this term of council, uh, We've heard very, very good presentations by those who are in favour, uh, but we've only heard, um, oh, no, that, that came out incorrectly. We've heard from Sydney Flight School and from, from our own uh, staff, we've heard some very, very good reasons why we should be excited about this thing. But we also, I think we're fairly conscious that we hadn't heard what the local residents, particularly the airport people, were saying. And so it'd be just great if we could have that opportunity. You'll find that they're very, quite hope, very much supportive the whole process. So it's not a case of us versus them, but they just have a different perspective and it was really worth hearing it. So if consideration could be given to getting them at some stage, if that was possible, it would be worthwhile. And I'd finally commend the, uh, <coughs> the appropriate manager for the input that he made on the, on the day because it was, it was tremendous, the, uh, the work that, uh, that Robert put into it and the understanding that he's got of it certainly filled me with a lot of confidence to think like we know where we're going, as well as, of course, from the uh, manager for economic development. Thank you very much. Uh, I, just before I go to Deputy Mayor, just in relation to the suggestion about uh, others talking to the council, I think, I think that has merit, but I'm also just being mindful of, uh, of everyone's time, and I just wonder whether... Would it be appropriate if perhaps, um, and Councillor Judd, I'd seek your view on this, whether the committee normally you wouldn't meet perhaps in September, but whether the Aerodrome users maybe could meet uh, for that purpose and that all councillors that may be interested uh, and uh, available could perhaps attend that, uh, again, specific for that purpose? Do you think that's a good idea, Rob? I think the users are willing to meet every month if there's something to talk about. I think uh, as you know, important things may be coming up in the future, I think we've sort of got to keep things rolling as well. So keep it with, it's, it's great to get the feedback and ideas, so that's what we need. There was a good spirit. I wasn't quite sure. I didn't know what 
to, to expect, and that's not taking anything away from those that were present, because I frankly, honestly, didn't know what to expect. Uh, and I'd say some others were <laughs> similar view too. Um, uh, thank you. I'll go to the Deputy Mayor. I think in that same meeting it might be uh, maybe an idea to invite local residents who are not part of the airport scene, but you know, next door, sort of thing. So they're on, um, they may know what's going on and taking their airport too. That's a good idea. The councils, do you think that has some, some merit? Councillor Wink? Yeah, I certainly think it does. And I think, yeah, there's an no idea of a meeting coming up sooner rather than later, too. They probably want to wait now and have time to think about what happened at the last meeting. Yeah, I'd love to probably have a few questions and then probably ask us. And you guys have a similar moment. So, what you'd like to see it earlier, not oh, left? No, it's September. Oh, okay, yep. So that, um, yep, okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Councillor Oliver, would you. Was your hand up? No. All oh, right, sorry. <laughs> right, thank you. Uh, so, well, Councillor, I'd be happy to receive uh, a motion just specifically in relation to that. Is it Councillor Judd? Yeah, I'll move that. So, you'll move that uh, the Tomorrow Drone Users Committee convene uh, a meeting on committee day uh, in September uh, with, again, uh, the members of that committee, councillors. And, uh, and neighbours of, of that precinct. Seconded, Council Slay. Moved and seconded. Is there further discussion? Donald. I, I just want to say that the Government Development Manager and myself were trying to work, have a uh, PowerPoint presentation ready for the other night and didn't quite work, but it's, I hope by uh, <coughs> September meeting we can do something that's you know, a, a bit more. Uh, you know, promising on uh, promoting the hot, all, the, all the different ideas. So, yeah. no, thanks, Councillor Judd. No further discussion. I'll put the motion just for that particular motion. All those of that opinion, please say aye. Contrary, no. Get the motion carried. Thank you very much. Uh, the remainder, uh, the report, the Aerodrome News Committee, and the recommendations. I'm prepared to move their adoption. Councillor Judd, Councillor Slay, move the second. All those of that opinion, please say aye. 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 Contra, no. We have a motion carried. Thank you. Very, very much. <coughs> uh, Councillor, that's all the committee reports we have to hand. Uh, we now go to delegates' reports. Do we have delegates' reports? Thank you. The Deputy Mayor. Uh, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we've held our Australia Day AGM last week and uh, currently have a committee of five. We're the sort of chairman, there is the deputy chair, uh, Beth Thurman is the secretary, Gus Oliver is the treasurer, and many of one that has funded the stage, but uh, we're looking for some more to join the, join the committee. Uh, whether we actually have a Australia Day function was for well, its normal state, anyways. Obviously, it's well truly up in the air, but we'll um, see what happens in the next few months, I dare say. But I think at the end of the day, we'll still have some sort of a board ceremony anyway for various categories. So it should be on good now, I think. Thanks, Mr. Deputy Mayor. And I, I just on behalf of Council, congratulate you and uh, Mrs. Furman and <laughs> Councillor. Oliver, uh, on your election, and I know we're small in number, but you seem to get the job uh, done. Uh, but I just I do thank you for your leadership of that committee over an extended period. And um, yes, certainly uncharted waters, but uh, I understand that there have been some already indicate they don't want ambassadors. Um, but anyway, we'll see. Thanks very much. Further delegates reports? Council Oliver. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> we had the Sports Council meeting last night and COVID was taking its toll there as well. Um, although it was reasonably mm. well attended, you know, considering the weather conditions. But uh, we did decide, I think, to have bypass next month's meeting and have our next one in um, October. So, because That's there's just nothing, there's nothing going on at all. Um, not a heck of a lot of sport. No, not very much at all. 
And the other pleasing thing I thought was uh, very good of Simon, the newly elected president of the Northern Jets, who remarked and thanked Council for the works that have been done out there at the, at the footy ground. So, um, yes, exactly. And uh, just on that, did you, have you had a chance to talk to the director about that request? No, I haven't. <laughs> Between the both of us, we've got to tend to be the one at the pool. The pardon? The one at the pool. Yes. Yeah, no, I was going to bring it up as Oh, right, thanks. Yep. Very good. Thanks, Councillor Oliver. Uh, further delegates reports. Uh, just to advise Councillors, there is a Riverina, JO and Rerod board meeting next Thursday. Uh, the Deputy Mayor will, uh, will be there uh, on, uh, on the Thursday for Rip and as will I, and also for Rerod. The general manager will be there as well. So that again will be via Zoom, councillors. We were, I must say, I was determined that we were going to meet and convene, but uh, the CEO, who's unfortunately had an accident with her uh, left arm, um, going walking in high hills <laughs> several kilometres isn't wise, as she's learned. Um, yeah, she couldn't find a venue that was. Was, was big enough, and anyway. So we've got to do it by Zoom again, so we will um, see how that goes. Nothing further? No, thank you very much. Uh, Councillors, we now go over to page 196, the Mayor's Report for July. There's a recommendation on page, the bottom of page 198 that that Mayor's Report be noted. Councillor Winky, thank you, has moved that way. Is there a second for the motion? Councillor Smith, move and a seconded. Is there a further discussion? Not, I'll put the motion. All those about opinion, please say aye. Contrary, no. Be the motion carried. Thank you. Councillors, I have a motion to see the staff report. Thank you, Deputy Mayor, Councillor Winky, move and seconded. All those of that opinion, please say aye. Country, no. We have a motion carried. Thank you. Councillors, over to page 200, General Manager's Report 10.1, calendar. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Another incredibly uh, full calendar of events. <laughs> Only two of these months, so we uh, have yeah, council. <laughs> Very sad, councillors. I said in my mayoral minute that um, just don't realise uh, how much that we do miss all of these events when you keep seeing things cancelled, and it's a responsible thing to do. And, but um, yeah, it is sad, but makes us appreciate them even more. That's for sure. Uh, Councillors, there's a recommendation there on page 200 that the calendar of events be noted. Councillor Winky has moved that way. There is a second for the motion. Councillor Slay, thank you. Moved and seconded. Uh, no further discussion. I'll put the motion. All those of that opinion, please say aye. aye. Contrary, no. Clear the motion carry. Thank you. 202.10.2, seal, General Manager. Um, thank you uh, very much, Mr Mayor. Uh, this is the uh, seals of, uh, for the month and I'm uh, to be fixed. And I note there that there are three uh, properties of the aerodrome uh, the contracts there, so it's a very good, uh, uh, very good thing. And we're getting very close to no uh, stop that. Um, so, yeah, the council's uh, option. That's, that's excellent. Councillor Smith? Move that way. So you'll move the recommendation that we fix the seal. Thank you. Second for the motion, Councillor McLaren moved and seconded. Is there further discussion? If not, I'll put the motion. All those without opinion, please say aye. Aye. Contrary, no. Clear the motion carry. Thank you. Page 202, 10.3, procurement policy. Yes, thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, councillors, as you're aware, uh, this document, the procurement policy, went out for uh, public comment and submissions. Uh, at the time of closure of the uh, uh, submission period, we had two uh, submissions received. Um, going through the, uh, the documents uh, uh, that were received, uh, there are some uh, reasonable points made uh, in terms of um, uh, some gaps in the policy, uh, you know, some clarification that's needed, and, and some inconsistencies. And, and given that, you know, now is probably not the time to be uh, to be reviewing this because it, it 
it does need to be gone over in uh, some detail. I would probably suggest that uh, uh, this be referred back to the next meeting after the changes are made. Thank you, Mr. General Manager. Councillor Smith. I'll move that way. So uh, you're moving that way until the next meeting. Uh, but, uh, yes, that we consider the changes. Yeah, uh, stand the table, table and refer the back. The yeah, okay. So you'll move that way. Second, Councillor Judge. Moved and seconded. Further discussion. I, I, I will say, and I know I've said it to some of my colleagues, that uh, this is a very genuine and, and good process, and I think it's great that there have been submissions received, but it, it just gets a little frustrating sometimes when we have had workshop that we've worked very, very hard on, then it come back to council, uh, and uh, but again, this is the process, and democracy is at work. So uh, anyway. I just thought I'd uh, share that. Councillor Slay? One unfortunate aspect of the process has been the way in which the document was actually presented to the public. And I've been informed that this was an error. Uh, it simply included the, uh, the track meet changes, but it did, and I noticed that one of the respondents has drawn attention to that, saying that it doesn't look like a very professional document. Uh, I think that that is probably worth noting. Uh, those things happen. Uh, they very rarely happen in this shine, I might say. But, um, no, so I, 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 I take your valid point, Councillor Slay, and that's, um, that's certainly noted, and we do sincerely apologise for that. Uh, uh, that uh, wasn't meant to happen, but we, we are uh, human. <laughs> Uh, and uh, I'm proud of the fact that this council makes very few mistakes, but again, we are human and we apologise uh, unreservedly uh, for that error. So thank you for that. If there's no further discussion, I will put the motion. All those of that opinion, please say aye. 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 Contrary, no. Clear the motion carried. Thank you. Just there, can, I, can I just seek clarification as to how that will move forward from here? Uh, you know, do, you, do you want uh, this to be reviewed by a group of people, or do you want us to uh, this after review it and bring it back to council? What, what's the process that the council would prefer? Okay. Councillor McLaren. Um, I'd like to move that a small working party of interested councillors work with the general manager to uh, clarify the issues that have been raised and bring it back to council. So uh, bring it back to what the assets committee to tease out. Okay, so interest council that's fairly broad. So those that wish to turn up can. Okay, uh, so you're moving that, that way. Second of the motion, please. Thank you, Councillor Judd. Moved and second is a discussion. If no further discussion. I'll put the motion. All those of that opinion, please say aye. Aye. Contrary, no. Let the motion carry. Thank you very much. Now, let's go to page 215, 10.4, the operational plan. General Manager. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is the end of year uh, operational plan. Um, so, uh, you know, most of the, uh, the tasks are pretty well completed. Uh, there for council information. Thank you. I think councillors, um, when you sit down and go through that that document, very extensive document, the 1920, what a busy, busy time we have had. Uh, and you've got to take your hat off to all of our staff, uh, really and truly, for getting through the vast majority of what we have planned to. So to be frank, you know, hats off to every single uh, one of our, our management team, but also uh, staff on the ground. Thank you. Councillor Oliver. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Page 256 or 55, the Road Safety Officer, when she spoke to the assets meeting the other day, she said that um, the schools are now accepting RSOs back yes. into yes. onto their grounds. That's <coughs> not allowed. I'd like to see in here that they form up relationships with schools within Shires to um, 
do something similar as to what the former RSO Bruce Barrett covered with school bus um, rules and, and how to align the buses and what your, support, what your requirements are for the kids. I thought that was a really good program. Um, I see from time to time that we try not to let it happen, but kids will see Ma across the other side of the road and they'll run around the front of the bus and the kids can go wrong. But we try to drum that in more that if the RSO and one of the bus operators get together as they did previously and, and strike up this type of education, I think it'd be um, not received up there. So that's what I'd like to do in that space anyway. Thanks, Councillor Oliver, General Manager. Yeah, Mr. Bauer, I can take that back to uh, uh, the road safety officer, uh, Councillor Oliver, and make sure she, she, she makes that. contacts. Yeah. Yeah, well, this is something I've been pushing for for quite some time since, well, previous RSAs, and, and it just couldn't happen because the schools, for some reason, wouldn't let them on. The so was it the schools or was it the RMS? The RMS or the well, I don't know if it was that somebody was blocking it anyway. Which is I thought it was transport from New South Wales that were not being very helpful. Strange. Uh, yes. Well, it's the same organisation. Okay, but anyway, it's great to see they've had a change of heart that the RSAs are going back to our schools. That's a big tick, but yes, uh, Councillor Irene, Councillor Happy, and to take that up. Uh, with the RSA. And uh, if I can, Mr. The, uh, the reason that occurred was that uh, our group uh, of four councils made representations to uh, the local RMS people. They took it to a higher level uh, and uh, finally common sense prevailed. So it's um, well done to everyone. Well done. A little win, see, working together, yep. singing off the same hymn sheet. Very, very good. That's two wins in 10 <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, thank you very much, and uh, Councillor Oliver, we will pursue that for you. Uh, Councillors, any other items in the operational plan for 1920? Councillor Smith. Yes, uh, back to the uh, road safety officer. Yes. And I just happened to put in the bag about mobility and scooter speed call, that's what the headline was, it was in one of the papers. And uh, just says there that a judge's uh, recommended mobility scooters be insured. Their speeds limited to three kilometres an hour in shops and for riders to, to undergo a medical test to see if they're fit for, to operate them. It comes up a 71 year old woman suffered a broken leg when she was run down at Deepwater Plaza and Boy Boy by a rider who was uh, in a rush in July 16. The injured woman was walking out uh, of the shop, in the uh, shopping centre, uh, amenities corridor, when she was struck by a woman on a mobility scooter. The rider told security she was in a rush to see her dad in the hospital. Uh, she was had, uh, her vision wasn't good, uh, she was not that good after the stroke. She'd had a stroke and she wasn't that good until uh, it was too late. Uh, the injured woman filed a civil lawsuit against the shopping centre operator. And I won't go through the whole. But uh, the district court judge, Matthew Digger, found the injured woman to be an honest witness and said it was the scooter rider's careless control which caused the incident. He ordered the woman to pay the centre's legal costs and made the safety recommendations on mobile scooter use. I'll give you that bit of paper to give the road safety officer. Thank you. Uh, I just, uh, when I seen this bit the other day, I yeah. pulled that bit out. We've certainly got our share of... Uh, and we like had a problem with, no, the skip, with the things before. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Smith. Anything further, councillors? If not, uh, there is a recommendation that the report be noted. Councillor Winky, can, can, uh, can I just also add there? Yes. Yeah, thank you. Now, thanks to the, to the staff for the job that they've done for the workload that they've done. Thanks, Councillor Winky. Yes, uh, very much so. And, uh,
you know, coupled with their day to day work plus millions upon millions of dollars of extra works from state and federal government grants, it's, uh, it's a, it is a fine effort. So thanks, Councillor Lee. Uh, so in doing so, you're moving the recommendation that the report's noted. Thank you. Second up, please. Councillor Slay moved and seconded. Further discussion? I wish I could get as many green lights when I'm travelling to Wagga yeah. as we've got on this report. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, if there's no further discussion, I'll put the motion. All those in that opinion, please say aye. Aye. Contrary, no. Clear the motion carried. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, Mr General Manager, nothing of an urgent late no. nature? No. Thank you. Uh, Councillors, we now go to page 299, Engineering Services Department Report, 11.1, uh, .1, Golden Fields Water Drinking Station, the Engineering Technical Manager. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Yeah. Um, happy to say the report is as written, and I'm happy to answer any questions if anybody's got. Just to note, thank you, Mr. Manager. Just to note there that were you or the engineering department with you, was the bubbler already at Federal Park? Oh, you are? Yeah. It's all right, I thought you would be. You're yeah. on the ball. I just thought I'd mention. I might have caught you out. Yeah, no, I didn't realise it was about that. <laughs> yeah, right. uh, thank you. Council Oliver. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I support the idea of going to Gloucester Park, particularly now that all that new play equipment is there. There's a few different functions held there from time to time, and they might need drinks. So I think it's the obvious place to put it at this stage. And what were you, I didn't quite hear what you were talking to the director about with the bubbler at Bethel Park. I, just, I was just asking if he was aware that there was a bubbler at. Federal Park. There is one there. Is yeah. There? I had it here to store one there as well, but um, and probably at our cost, not the one we've been at. There is a no, I mean, there is a park there, so I'll leave that one. All right. So you'll move that uh, we install the last Goldfields Water County Council drinking station at Gloucester Park. Second for the motion, Councillor McLaren. Move the second. Further discussion, Councillor McLaren. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I know the Director of Engineering Technical Manager discusses that they might be able to put bubblers at Nixon Park, a lower cost option. Um, yeah, I think I mentioned in the report that I had a request, it was come through the Council's Facebook page, and it was very brief. It was like, can Council put um, drinking facilities in sports fields and parks? So I followed it up and and ask them to you know, add some more detail about what they wanted and where, and I never heard back, but I, I like think that should be done, and I think there are many lower cost alternatives that you know, similar to, to what's at Federal Park now. The, the Golden Fields water stations are really the, the you know the high end of you know, you know, various fill points and or flash branding on them. Um, yeah, they've got heaps of stuff on it, but now yeah, I am in favour of providing drinking, uh, improved drinking facilities at the sports and parks, and I sort of plan to come back um, to assets and operations and then probably under budget estimates mm -hmm. to, to look at that uh, as a council wide initiative as well, because that's the other thing. If it's a mixed park, I'm not sure of it. Mm -hmm. yeah, you've sort of got a quite a similar level of service at other sites. So. I just think this is the obvious way to go. I was a little bit reluctant because I think this is the third day we've had a placement of these, <laughs> the placement of these fans. So I know we did the initial one, when we come back. Lost the park as an option then, and it was overlooked again for the park. But I, I really feel strongly that we're better off going a different way. Yeah, I think they're a higher order product too. So I think having them at Lost the Park makes more sense. Yeah. But I do support definitely having drinking options, water bottle filling stations at our sports grounds. Oh, the uses. Thank you, uh, Mr. Lane. Thank you, Councillor McLaren. And I, I, I do support the principle, but obviously I also am interested to see what the report says in relation to costs and options uh, to see what um, you know, what may be what may be done in that space. So uh, thank you very much. There is the motion that Council Oliver and Council McLaren have moved that the last drinking station proudly sponsored by Golden Fields Water and the Council uh, go to Gloucester Park. Further discussion, Councillor Smith. Just on discussion of bubbles, I don't think uh, 
there's something going about now about bundles that are inappropriate with this virus about because of the you can fill a bottle but don't use the bubbles. I've seen somebody where it said don't use the bubbles, you can fill a bottle because of the virus contact. Wait till it's over. <laughs> it takes some time again. Anyway, it might Thank be you, Councillor Smith, an important point to raise. Uh, Thank you for that, and we'll monitor that. Uh, I read that somewhere. And I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, well, it's not far fetched. Uh, so, councillors, we have a motion before you. Uh, I'll put the motion. All those of that opinion, please say aye. Contrary, no. I declare the motion carried unanimously. Thank you very much. Uh, nothing of an urgent late nature. He's learning, councillors, he's learning, and it's uh, doing, <laughs> doing very well. Uh, thank you very much. Councillors, let's now proceed to page 301, Environmental Services, 12.1, uh, DA application, the Director of Environmental Services. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Uh, this is a application under set one to vary a planning policy. Um, planning decisions so that we need to have votes reported, of course. Um, it's within the 10% variation and the Town plan has gone through the pros and cons and uh, recommended that the uh, subdivision be approved with conditions. Thanks, Mr. Director, and uh, yeah, again, another great report from our town plan. Uh, just a, a real gift. Mr. Deputy Mayor. Oh, the recommendation. So you're moving recommendation, page 306. Councillor Smith, you've seconded the motion. Is there further discussion, councillors? If not, I will ask you all, because obviously, uh, being a DA, we have to record our votes. So all those of that opinion, please raise your hand. Uh, I declare the motion carried unanimously. For all those that are present. Thank you very much, councillors. Uh, councillors, page 309, uh, and I will... Uh, Vacate the chair and uh, hand the gavel to the deputy mayor. Councillors, the item 4.2, Town Hall Theatre, uh, General Manager. Um, thanks, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is just a, a report, a letter from the Town Hall Theatre Committee. Um, so just sharing problem. The problem shared is a problem halved. Um, the things aren't going well for the Town Hall Theatre at the moment for obvious reasons. We've, we've been reduced to a capacity of 22. There's no new releases out. Um, and look, we're, we're trying to put a facility, uh, keep the facility going as an outlet for. A, uh, the community that started um, entertainment options. However, for various reasons, uh, we're not being su supported, and uh, so much so that we've lost in the first month of trading an amount of $3,000. Now, our committee is very focused on the bottom line and have been proud of that over the decade plus that we've been operating it. You know, we've, we've done so at a, 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 a neutral cost. To uh, ratepayers, and yeah, we're just um, mindful of that. And just wanted to report the issue to council and um, yeah, to share a problem more than anything. Yeah, council are unfortunate the way things are at the moment, but um, I think we've got a lot of problems with the tax and tax and Yeah, yes, Mr. Chairman, and also I think people are shying away for, from venues um, like that, closed spaces. Um, naturally, however, you know we have got our COVID safe plan, and we have uh, reduced the number of seats significantly, and um, you know, we're confident that it's safe to go to the movies. But um, yeah, there's lots of uh, things against us at the moment, so it may be a case of uh, after we've seen through the uh, screenings that we've got scheduled in August, but we may close down again, uh, possibly reopen for the school holidays, and then maybe go back into the process again until. Uh, to return to some seconds of normal. Yes, 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, how many sessions do they have per week, with, uh, Director? Um, it's we have reduced them um, because of demand. Yeah. Uh, normally, we have two on Wednesday, one on Friday, uh, two on Saturday, one on Sunday. That was our, our normal schedule. Okay. In school holidays, we do a lot more than that. We tend to get first release movies and they have to be screened you know, up to eight times a week for that particular movie. So we have them you know, nearly every day, except for Monday. So, yeah, so, so normally, uh, it's about six screens a week. But at the moment, moment. Yeah. at the moment, uh, at the moment we're we're probably doing four, four. four screens a week. Yeah. And how many seats are available in the theatre? Twenty-two. Twenty-two at ten dollars a ticket. So it's two hundred and twenty dollars a week per month. That's two thousand eight hundred, and the wages are three and a half thousand a month. That was. That's, oh, that's on a full setting in July. Yeah. Yeah, it's not stacking up. Mm -hmm. It's not sacking up, but we have cut the hours back. We, we, we've got our manager and, and an assistant to in the uh, projection room, and you know they, they're very mindful and they're doing more hours. That they're not putting down as well. Um, you know they know the state of play and uh, have a love for the theatre as well. So it, it's um, look, it's a worry. It's you know, and it's something that it's, it's the first thing we discuss every or the last thing actually we discuss every meeting is how we're performing financially. And, something they're very mindful of. Do you see the school holidays being viable in the two-week school holiday period? We're hoping so because we're hoping to um, get new release movies. Um, and we're working on that at the moment. Um, that's certainly going to help and if we can get 22 at each screening um, and, and have an increased number of screenings, we're hoping that, that will have you know, some way to address the balance but we need the the, uh, the kiosk and touch shop to the flow, uh, and it usually does during school holidays. That's the time we catch up. So, is it feasible? Is it a feasible <coughs> option to have it just open during the school holidays till Christmas? I think that's what the way the committee is. But they will have a meeting um, towards the end of this month, the next week or so, and we'll have a look at what's happened this month, uh, which hasn't been pretty. We had, I think, we've had six no shows. Um, so it's, it's just not working what we had planned. So um, we're just trying to find alternatives to, to provide an outlet, which I think is valued by the community. Um, but a lot of things against us at the moment. Thank you. Well, you just ask us to know the report or do you want to do Yeah, well, I think so. Unless there's any, any feedback. Yeah. Yes, is it appropriate to move that it only be open during the school holidays for operation to sting losses, or would, would you prefer to consult with the committee and have their recommendation back to council? I think that would be the most appropriate way to do it. You know, they're fairly autonomous and yeah. just sort of come over the top of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that. Yeah, I mean, that there is fine for council. Yeah. Okay, I'm happy to move. Um, we note the report. Yep, yeah, that's it. Thank you, Oh, I'll stick that. Play. Further discussion? Three, Mr. Chairman. It's also a point of through our press here that, you know, it's a use it or lose it facility as well, too, for our community. So, passed on. Further discussion? I'll put the motion out in favour. Against? Carried. All of them. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. Deputy Mayor, for handling that item. Uh, councillors, we now proceed to a uh, late report, which I understand was uh, emailed out. Environmental Services Department, Local Roads and Community Infrastructure Fund. And uh, the author is the town planner, the director. Uh, have you got... Oh, I did have a score one more time. You got those points? No, come on. Actually, I'll get you. Uh, Thanks. Uh, councillors, uh, oh, sorry, the director, do you have anything? No, actually. Thank you. Uh, councillors, I'm going to defer to the Director of Finance Administration uh, just to put some costings around uh, the bottom table there, just to maybe, maybe of assistance to you. Uh, so, the Director. Thank you, Steve. Uh, so, in the table at the bottom of the page there, uh, we're looking at um, the floor library project. It would just be basically a top up to the 189,000 that we got for the outdoor reading room, and it will be used for, to assist with relocating the circulation desk to the front of the library. The Lake Centenary entrance upgrade, um, there's a proposed project out there to the value of $20,000 with the total project value. And at the Bundawarra Centre, there's a couple of activities that we had in our um, delivery plan. So the virtual tour, uh, which is estimated to be about $10,000, or the gold panning area, which is estimated to be around about $8,000. Uh, and then those last three items, the mobility ramps, the curb and guttering, or, and the footpaths, that would be just as much as uh, the funds allowed for those. But we understand, Madam Director, the, it was about $2,500 each for a mobility ramp. That's why I'm standing. Is that right, Rob? The director, the manager? Um, so this was into the back of the library. It's quite a way off the ground. Oh, no, no, mobility ramps. Mobility ramps. Oh, yeah, yeah that's, that's probably a little bit less, but... Budgeting purposes, you... Probably more but that's around, that's around. So, the works manager, would you? Oh, Ram rooms. Ram rooms each will cost somewhere $1,500 to control yeah. okay. So, for budgeting purposes, it's just two. Oh, okay. Thank you. The director? Uh, I probably didn't have anything. Uh, so, oh, yeah, so the curb and gallery and the footpaths, yep, okay. Normal rate. So, Council, that's just extra information for you. Uh, Council Oliver. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm favouring the mobility ramps, just to run the money out on that. That's my default's work. Thank you. The Deputy Mayor. Yeah, I had the same thought, actually. I think there's yeah, something that sort of kind of gets done when there's a bit of spare money around, and with all the tubes and stuff all thing around these days, I think the more we get done, the better. There's a lot of complaints about so we're not uh, declaring any interests at this time. Not yet. It's got a couple of years. Another ten years. <laughs> no, just asking. Thank you, <laughs> manager. The manager. I retract your I I was actually thinking about your route project, but then I realised we're talking about a different project, the, the walking track at Henry Park. It's different. Yeah. Back on track. Channel. Channel. Okay, <laughs> thank you so much for that. Let's go down to the. We have something relevant. I, I, yes, okay. I do. General yeah. Manager. Um, just wanted to, to note to councillors there are actually two decision points in this. The first one is whether we uh, are going to jettison the project for uh, um, the disabled toilet. 
Uh, if that's the case, you've got $20,000 to reallocate. If you do decide to go down the track of uh, still going with the toilet, it would need to be purchased out of council funds, but the additional 10000 would do the, be the infrastructure work behind it to get from the sewerage and a pathway to it. Um, and then the additional 10000 if you decided to go down the track of the tram ramp options, um, would effectively offset the cost of the... <coughs> Thank you. Uh, the Deputy Mayor. Yeah, that was my uh, thoughts too, that um, yeah, we go ahead and put in the infrastructure for the toilets, but um, yeah, what that cost, of, what it was left over and going towards it would be there. Thank you. Councillor Smith. Well, I've got the same vein. I would like to see the toilets there because there are so many people in that park on those couple of occasions a year that really need to that aren't able to go that far away. But these are these are these uh, mobile. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but yeah, but, you know, if there's a toilet foot there, uh, you know, and it may not be there permanent, but if we can drop it there, cap it there, use it for those few days, use it in other places with the infrastructure that's there. I don't know. You might be able to reline the pipe. I don't know. I haven't. I'm not into that. Part of the bottom end of the business, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I still believe it needs to happen well there, on, particularly on those days. Yes. Thanks, Councillor Smith. You have been a consistent advocate uh, in that vein. Thank you, Councillor Wink. Yeah, I, I agree with uh, Councillor Smith along those lines. So I think it's important that we do continue to aim to at least get that up and running as soon as we can. But I guess the uh, the other thing would be that we have to have the uh, accessible toilet or at least the measurements of it before we put the concrete down and, and, and for the uh, planes and whatnot to, uh, to go with that. But I certainly would like to see if us go along that, down that line, I think, and uh, use the, uh, if there's anything left over, use it for the plane or something. Thank you, Councillor Winkie. That seems, Councillor, there seems to be general consensus uh, for uh, that position. Uh, if that's the case, I'd be happy to receive a motion. That's a I'd like to move a motion to that effect to yeah. you. The track that we, uh, we can run the uh, accessible toilet out of our own funds and use, uh, use the uh, money allocated here to put the donation down for it. I'll make a path to it, whatever. Thank you. Councillor Smith, you've seconded the motion. Yes. Moved and seconded. Is further discussion? So the additional would be the, right? Yes. <coughs> can, uh, councillors and, and staff, can I ask us all to please try and project their voices a bit, uh, a bit more, uh, please? I know that you know it's um, uh, it can be a bit hard, but uh, if we can try and remember that would be great. Thank you. So we have a motion moved by Councillor Winkie, second by Councillor Smith, uh, that we do proceed down the path as articulated by Councillor Winkie. Uh, is there any further discussion? If not, I'll put the motion. All those of that opinion, please say aye. 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 Contrary, no. Declare the motion carried. Thank you very much. Nothing of an urgent late nature from the director? Okay. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> Councillors, over to page 311, the Administration Finance Department report, 13.1, stop take the director. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, so this is just the report for the variations to our stores balance. Um, right off of $48.44 and that just rises up and we conducted our annual stock take of our stores. Happy to take any questions. Thank you, Madam Director. Any comments or questions? If not, there is a council yeah, the recommendation. Thank yeah. you. You'll move the recommendation uh, on page 311. Uh, second to Councillor. Councillor Slay moved and seconded. Uh, no further discussion. If not, I'll put the motion. All those in that opinion, please say aye. Uh, country no. Clear the motion and carry. Thank you. We go to page 314, 13.2, records of the mass records for destruction being correct. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, so these are just uh, some records to be destroyed uh, from Pinnacle. And it's just in accordance with GA39. Thank you, Madam Director. 
Councillor Winky, you're moving uh, the recommendation on page 314. Councillor Smith, you have seconded the motion. Moved and seconded. Further discussion? Right, I'll put the motion to you. All those of that opinion, please say aye. Uh, Country, no. Clear the motion carried unanimously. Thank you very much. Nothing of an urgent, late uh, nature, Madam Director. Mm -hmm. right, thank you. Very much. Uh, and how's the role going, Madam Director? Are you enjoying the role overall? Very busy. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, great to see. I know Council are, are thrilled that uh, uh, you have the senior <laughs> in place, uh, which, uh, which I would think is uh, a great help. Yes, yes. Um, I feel better now. Excellent. Thank you. And uh, councillors, I, I would just say uh, on your behalf to the director that um, I know that, uh, Madam Director, that you uh, lost uh, a special member of your family this week. So just so you know, the thoughts and prayers of us all are with you and your loved ones uh, at this time. And, uh, and we're, here. we're here for you. Thank you. Let's, councillors, go to page uh, <coughs> 316, correspondence, General Manager, 14.1. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, councillors, as you can see, the first uh, uh, item of correspondence uh, is that from Rerock, uh, and seeking council views or commitment uh, to uh, ongoing support for Rerock. Um, we won't go into all the background to it, but uh, we're, we're locked into the JO. Uh, but Rerock still plays an important part at this stage uh, and uh, is seeking our support to continue that uh, that operation. Thank you, uh, councillors. As the general manager pointed out, but as you know, we are locked in to the JO and under the model that the board uh, are wanting, and I will say, that just for information, that, uh, <coughs> excuse me, that uh, all of our other neighbouring councils, we're the last council to consider this, um, and uh, they've all opted in to continue, of course, for that two years. Uh, council Wink. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Is there a, uh, a dollar a value on, on what we would be up for? Yes, uh, yeah. Council Wink, yeah. we, we do have a respect to the Directive, so yeah. we've got, uh, Rerock is uh, membership 26,868. That's correct. And the JO uh, cost is 19, it's gone from 5,000 up to 19,200. Uh, so it's, it's a significant cost, councillors, and, uh, and in terms of the JO, of course. Uh, but again, we are locked into that for two years, and that's just the way it is. The director indicated that we have uh, the funds from the ESL in the account. Earning interest, so that's something. So, <laughs> so that'll make up for the twenty-six hours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, so yeah, but Councillor Winker, that's a, a appropriate question, and um, uh, you know, yes, that's a forty-six thousand dollar commitment to regional organisations um, for the next, <coughs> excuse me, uh, twelve months. <coughs> but, I know what you're all thinking, councillors, but uh, <laughs> I know what you're thinking. But at the moment, they uh, uh, have us over a barrel, the government in relation to the JO, and we want rock, the rock to continue. Councillor Wink. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to move the motion that we uh, redirect that 90,000 towards the 26, but we can't do that, so uh, I'll do the motion for that 26,000. If Thank you. Ship was put with rerun. <laughs> so you're yeah, you're moving the motion that uh, Tomorrowshire Council recommit to rerock for a further two years. Thank you. Second, Council Oliver, moved and seconded. Further discussion. I think it's the deputy. Sorry, sorry. Well, the deputy mayor goes to rerock. It's it's paying dividends for council. Very sad. Council stores through through Blue Rock and so forth, and, and um, as a group, you know, dealing with um, take up and so forth, and so um, you know, more united we get specific further. So I think it's well worthwhile being part of the Blue Rock group. 
Thank you, Mr. Deputy Mayor. And I think the other point is, before I go to Councillor McLaren, is this has been, as we all know, this has been a successful organisation for nearly 30 years, um, and we need it to stay strong and relevant uh, and real. We do not know what's going to happen to the JOs uh, after the two years, and that's just the current hard facts. Whether they will survive or whether they won't. So, uh, anyway, I'll go to Councillor McLaren. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think the next two years gives us a great opportunity to compare and contrast the cost benefit of both organisations over the same period. So, if we can go to the state government in two years' time and show them the cost that RERock is given to its member councils and the benefits that it's been to those councils, compared to the JO cost and what benefits it might turn up, then that's a very heavy case to push for RERock to be the model to go forward with. Thank you, Councillor Cohen. It certainly should be. Uh, I'll be very interested to see this uh, announcement of when the JO review uh, dates. They should have been out by now. They are not. Uh, I spoke to the Minister's uh, senior advisor, Mr Wilkie, the other day, and they are still working on it. Uh, but Rest assured that we will have input uh, into that uh, soon. Thank you, Councillor State, for your patience. Mr. Mayor, I appreciate the optimism of my colleague in suggesting that it would make the slightest difference. We've indicated over the last 12 or 18 months that despite all of the logical reasons and the loud reasoning that we've engaged in, that it has been, for some political, maybe totally unknown to us. Uh, we've been ignored, we've been able to, by we, I mean the shires of New South Wales, not just Tamora Shire. However, I think that it is, it's relevant that we express our support for rewrite uh, when you've got a good thing and try to keep it going and just hope that in the next two years you people are able at some level to um, get the message across to the appropriate ministers. Thanks very much, Councillor Slay. <coughs> Look, it is frustrating. Just remember, every conversation that's had, been had here is replicated across the footprint uh, of the jail, with the exception of one large centre uh, to the south. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but that's just the reality. Uh, that's just the reality. But thank you, Councillor. Again, we're talking about uh, Rerock. Yes. Uh, there is an expense, but obviously this council, based on the motion and the discussion I've heard thus far, believe it is an investment. Uh, it's been here for 30 years, and I have a feeling, a very strong one, that will be here for another 30 uh, and, and beyond. So is there no further discussion? If not, I'll put the motion. All those of that opinion, please say aye. Aye. Let me know. Clear the motion, Karen. Thank you very much. Uh, councillors, because it's one of the great things that during this uh, interesting journey uh, that we've been on with um, the Jays, that all of the re-rock councils, again with an exception or two, um, they have stuck together. They have stuck together uh, through, uh, through the tough times and supported each other and the staff involved. And, and, uh, and I, I do warmly thank Tomorrow Shire Council for for that resolution that you've just passed unanimously. Thank you. Uh, let's now go, Council, to page 319, 14.2, Polly Petal, the General Manager. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr Mayor. Councillors, this was uh, an issue that was uh, before Council in uh, April. Um, that was approved then, but then there was a deferral due to COVID-19. Um, it was, was to be held in May. Now it's uh, been rescheduled to the 20th to the 27th of September. Uh, and we're just seeking, uh, or they're just seeking uh, an amendment to, uh, or an approval based on those amended conditions. Thank you. Uh, Councillors, you see that, that there, I think this is great to have this event in our show again to raise some significant money over an extended period. That's over. Oh, you're moving on this. Council approved the new date. Thank you, moved. Seconded, Council Judge. Moved. Seconded. Further discussion? The Deputy Mayor. And I also like to add that the uh, Mayor should be a Council Rep in the right way. 
And now I'm busy, whatever it is. <laughs> Very funny. Anyway, thank you very much. Uh, the Deputy Mayor is a, a resident court jester. Uh, been moved and seconded to no further discussion. <laughs> Motion very quickly. All those of that opinion, please say aye. Contrary, no. We have the motion carried. Thank you very much. Nothing of an urgent late nature from the general manager in terms of correspondence. No. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> Councillors, we now proceed to page 341. We have no uh, uh, notices of motion. Therefore, we go to business without notice. And we start with Councillor Oliver. Uh, yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. This was brought up at the Sports Council meeting last night. Apparently, people using the heated pool are driving in the bowling club lane and then across the front of the old pool, parking down in around there. Um, they were quite concerned that it's a blind corner around that brick building and someone might get pay out of the Yep. Well, that's true, uh, Councillor Oliver. Something out of block it off. I went and had a look today and it's muddying it up. Yes, um, at the access and equity uh, meeting, which we formed um, this month, um, that the whole issue of disabled access to the uh, heater pool was raised, um, including the front area with a very steep ramp that uh, is very difficult. I actually met uh, Rob Jordan around on site and yeah, said we had to help him up that steep part of the back. So there may be a proposal where we could put in an accessible car park at the back. Um, so that's something that I've got to talk to our engineering colleagues to see if we can do a design and costing and bring it back for the council's consideration. So thank you very much. Space. Thank you. Council Winston. Yeah, no, I was just going to say <coughs> speak on the same thing at uh, the director's paper. Oh, okay. Thanks. That's really so uh, so therefore, Councillor Oliver, you're happy that that's being dealt with by uh, the department? Well, I don't know. The way they were talking there last night, they were quite concerned that cars going around that corner of the old pool. Someone might have knocked over. But... <coughs> yes, they were. They did express genuine uh, concern. I think you've done the right thing and raised it for Council. I'll go to the Engineering Technical Manager. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Only thing I was going to suggest is if it was. Um, potentially consider a context move. Ones that you sit on the corner and you can see. Oh, can you speak up, please? I just said. Council wanted to still consider both options. Still potentially allow uh, accessible park there and have a convex mirror on the on the ninety degree. Angle, so you know, as you're travelling up, you can you can see around the building. Um, that's just an option. Well, if that's part of the, the proposed development through the yeah, yeah, I think that's we'll go with that. I think just leave it up to and wait for the report. Out, get the report back and we'll go from there. Okay. Report back to the bowling club people. Yeah. And the know that it's being addressed. Yeah, yeah. And, and the director's noted the, the, the comments and that'll all encompass, I'm sure. Thank you, Councillor Oliver. Anything further? No. Uh, thank you very much. Councillor Winky, business without notice. Uh, yeah, do, do have one. Um, I'm, I'm wondering if this, the, the time is sort of right for us to possibly look at um, our town hall here, uh, particularly with the cost of um, fees and charges that we've got on it. And whether it might be a time to sort of reconsider really um, whether we should be dropping that piece of charge so that we can attract people to uh, to use our one facility. You know, so it, it is a facility for the community, and I think it's one we should add to the community a little bit more. Um, you're smiling. <laughs> yeah. Particularly, I think, Councillor Winky, in light of, of COVID, you're sort of thinking yeah. that, yes, yeah, right. Yeah. yeah no, uh, thanks, Councillor Winky. I, I, Defer to the Director of Administration and Finance for, for your view in relation to Council Winkley's proposal, which, to be frank, uh, could have some merit. What's your view? Uh, thank Please. you, Mr. Mayor. Um, it probably does have some merit. 
Um, my comment was going to be, I did a bit of analysis of our income from the town hall over the last five years, and probably on average we're actually donating back about 34% of our income, so, um, you know, income to the year around the ten or twelve thousand dollars per year <coughs> and we're probably donating back about you know between the two and four thousand each year. Um, so the actual cash in not all that much. So if we yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, so what about an options paper? Is yeah. that something that, that would you be prepared to do maybe to look at different ways on the same day as what Council Wick is talking about? Or or possibly where the council makes a um, concerted effort to, uh, to donate and back more fees, like put about effort to the way you fees. Well, I, that's why oh, yeah. I think there could be a whole suite of options right. that we're not thinking about. And, uh, so, Council Wink, I might do a license instead of having to donate the fees back, that we just lower the fees and make it a little bit more attractive when people are looking at it rather than sort of seeing the fees that are there. How many people are saying, oh, it's too dear? And don't even sort of think about applying to get you know, some cuts involved in, in, in the cost of it. Well, Councillor Wink, are you happy to, to tease it out? This is business uh, with that now. Are you happy to move that the Director of Administration and Finance prepares a, a, an options paper for perhaps the Assets Committee to consider? Yeah, yeah, prepared to move that way? I'm happy to take that long because she's got time. Yeah, I'm sure she'll make time. That's her motto. I make time. Second for the motion. Councillor McLaren, you're second. Yes. And I have discussion. a discussion. Yes, please. Thank yes. you, Mr. In that analysis, it would be very helpful to know how, what the usage type is of the hall, like how much is community groups, how many weddings, how many private, you know, so I can get that sense of is it an affordable option? Can someone have a wedding here? Or, are they choosing not to and why? You know, it's such a wonderful facility and it's got a huge amount of public funding used in and I'd love to see it used as much as possible and if it's not being used, I'd love to know why. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sir, the Director. Oh, through you, Mr. I was just going to say I could, I could include a report that included that type of data. I've probably got most of it here anyway. Thanks, that would be great. Thank you. Thank you, the Director. Thanks for your just got to be mindful though, we haven't really had a crack at it. No, no. no. The only no. finished in December. That's right. And COVID shut everything down in March. Yeah. February's not the traditional wedding season. That's right. Now, I think that, you know, we have a few uh, functions here. And the facilities are unbelievable. Yeah. You know, we've got brand new stage lighting, sound system out the, out the front. You know, it's, you know, everything's good. And, you know, I think that the, you know, I, I think it's good value. Um, but, yeah, just, be mindful that this has we haven't had a chance to really you know, uh, promote it and, and you know see it in full you know, action. So now that's a that's a very important point, Mr. Director. But I, I do think it's probably helpful for council. And look, council may land uh, on that space, but at least uh, you know if we have a look at this uh, uh, a look at this paper and we can you know that information that out will come out and we can determine what we think is appropriate uh, or, or not. Uh, and go from there. Councillor Slade? I think once we've got that extra handrail out the front step, it's <laughs> 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 uh, Sorry, Mr. Mayor, I wasn't going to say that. <laughs> I just, I just <laughs> saw this uh, this fly grid and I thought I'm going to catch it. <laughs> I would uh, suggest to Councillor Slade, Mr. Mayor, if I made that maybe an escalator could help him too. <laughs> <laughs> Refer that to estimates, Council <laughs> uh, Thank you, Council. It's been moved and seconded uh, that uh, the Director of Administration and Finance prepares an options paper in relation to uh, the Memorial Town Hall uh, usage and fee structure. Uh, no further discussion. I put the motion. All those of that opinion, please say aye. Aye. Contrary, no. Be the motion carried. Thank you. Anything further, Councillor Winkler? No. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor McLaren. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the first thing I wanted to comment on was the new revamped Access and Equity Committee and commend the Director and ably supported by Belinda and uh, Rob. Uh, we had a great meeting the other day. Um, there was great community involvement from the reps and there was a great deal of respect shown to the committee members by the Director. And I understand they've already met on site at various locations, so the feedback and the interaction with the community groups has been 
five staff. So I want to commend the director on that committee. I, w I left the committee feeling really lifted. So thank you for that. And uh, the committee make it a success. Yeah, no, it was really good. And thank that you. afternoon, I got about four emails out already. From the yeah. Thank you, Councillor McKay. Just on that, uh, before I go back to you, uh, I endorse, as you know, Councillor Winky actually reported to me uh, after that, that he was uh, extremely impressed uh, with, with that uh, particular meeting. So, again, to the director, but also I think to the, uh, what do we call it, the technical officer, uh, Mrs. Bushel, uh, that uh, she also uh, did a fine job as well. So, thank you very much. Uh, thank, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And the other issue that I wanted to raise was to do with um, the agricultural sector and the harvesting and particularly the contract harvesters who travel from the north of our state and Queensland through the harvest season down through our state service a lot of our farmers in our area and go down through Victoria. Their whole business model is based on being able to pick up business from the north right down through to Victoria. Um, I think that the politicians don't necessarily understand, listening to an interview I heard yesterday, they don't understand the intricacies of this harvest operation for the contractors. And I think it would help if our council made some representations to our member to uh, let her know the urgency of this business for the contract harvesters and the access they need to be able to service a lot of farmers in our area, but to just remain viable. Um, we've got a potential of a big crop in our area this year. And if they're not able to come and Strip out crops or move down into Victoria, then it puts a jeopardy in that whole industry. So I just thought that then these contractors and affected farmers need some representation from the politicians in the areas that are affected, and I think I'd love to put some support behind them politically. Thanks, Councillor McLaren. And just on that, I know there's one uh, uh, local contractor in that situation that uh, approached me and wanted us um, just to make verbal representation. So uh, I've got uh, the, the state member for Cootamundra and this uh, business in contact with each other, uh, but yet in a formal sense, uh, we haven't done anything. And, and uh, uh, I think there's, we'd be the only ones uh, that would be advocating that position, but strength in numbers. Councillor Winky. Well, it really is an essential service, Mr. Mayor, and I think we need to treat it as such. Yeah. Is true, very true. Thank you, General Manager. Is that currently not allowed under the... Under the I thought they could go south, but they couldn't I, come back. I think the... I, I have to check on this, but listening to the interview yesterday, I think there's a permit for Victorian harvesters to go 100 kilometres north over their point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they don't, I don't... I, don't but um, I think from Queensland, they can come right down and go down to Victoria, but they can't turn around and go back the other way. So a lot of them maybe even started before you come up and they come Oh, well, they're a problem. <laughs> so you will need to seek clarification yeah, yeah, on that one. The Deputy Mayor. Yeah, there's, there's quite a few contract harvests from around Victoria who started in Queensland, just to go up in Queensland, started. We will be staying in the shipping normally, and then work their way down to here, and there's yeah, some people going into Victoria. So it's mostly about getting into Queensland or getting into and they've got to pick up there, they've got to up to like two weeks. That's impractical. Uh, you, you, know, you can't be sitting around with no time there for two weeks. Yeah, so uh, it's not just they can there. Really can't be doing it, it's just across the time. So, yeah, it's just got to come up with some sort of a scheme which um, why they can prove that they've come from an area that's been there in COVID-19. And I think it will work this is a big push the last week so by um, a lot of lot of um, the Harvest Association they're, they're pushing the government to make some sort of arrangement with Queensland, so hopefully something something for that sure but we more help with that. Thank you. General Manager, you know, to be honest, to say, I could contact James and Kat if she's in my school division um, and just a clarification as to what the actual yeah, So, Council happy with that if we just see uh, clarification from the cross border commissioner uh, in relation to that and make representations as required once you seek that clarification. I'll move that one. So, you'll move that in the direction, Secretary Kat, just briefly. 
Sorry, I beg your pardon, I'll backtrack. Move and second a discussion, Councillor Smith. Yeah, I think there was a meeting in Aubrey today with uh, Deputy Premier. Yeah. Today, I don't, I haven't heard what the outcome of that was. That's what the main cause what you said. Thank you. First of all, I, just to say, I think all of us have seen the, uh, the vision of the farmer from Victoria who was uh, advised to uh, freight 43 tonne of hay to Melbourne, then fly it to Sydney <laughs> and then come from Sydney. You know, it just, you know, it goes to show that there's logic to the pay of the party. Buying sheep is there today. Pardon? Buying sheep. Fly a sheep to Sydney and then bring it back as far as all. Sit up in the seat. Mind boggles. Uh, thank you, Councillor McLaren. Anything further? Thank you, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Nothing. Thank you, Councillor Smith. Nothing. Thank you, Councillor Chair. This is about us. Just report we uh, very much committee projects meeting held their first physical meeting last night. On uh, Tuesday night, I'm sorry, and uh, since March, uh, we had to move over to the hall as well to get proper social distancing. And uh, you know, I had a lot of favourable comments about uh, council work with the crowd funds and the other country communities in area park. And uh, uh, we're just very thankful for what the council has been doing, and uh, uh, especially the, all the managers and the staff. Uh, might have uh, carried it out. So, but, yeah, so a lot of good comments last on the, at the meeting other night. Thanks, Councillor Judge, for passing them on. And I'd ask the general managers, directors, and managers to please uh, take on board those comments personally, but also share that with uh, your team members. Uh, I think that's most important. So, thanks for sharing that. That's all. Thanks. Further, thank you. Uh, Councillor Slate, nothing. <coughs> thank you. I, Councillors, uh, uh, anything? Uh, oh yes, uh, the general manager has something which we've just found out. The general manager. Yeah, just uh, yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just uh, an email came from the local government New South Wales today, um, or this afternoon, saying the annual conference has been canned. Uh, it will be an online conference. Yeah. Uh, I do know. There's, there's actually that one, the water management conference, and the environmental awards are all. <laughs> Just on that, councillors, uh, I do know that several of our colleagues across the family uh, have already withdrawn uh, from the, the conference. So uh, that's that's uh, yeah, that's interesting. I know some are going to consider it at their September meeting, but um, the decision is obviously made. So anyway, so, uh, I was Hunter Valley. <laughs> anyway. Okay, sorry, the general manager. Just one other uh, item, sir, and that's uh, in relation to the September meeting. Uh, we originally put it back for the purpose of the, uh, the election that was going to be on. Uh, I'll uh, count it at the normal time of the month that it, uh, it has been. You, you move moved that way. way. Thank you. Second, yes, Judge, move and second. All those of that opinion, please say aye. Aye. Contrary, no. Clear the motion carried. Thank you. Very well picked up. Uh, well done, Mr. Brands. Well done. Thank you very much. Uh, so, uh, nothing further. Uh, if not, Council's motion receiving the Councillor's information paper, please. Councillor Oliver, Councillor McLaren, move and second. With all those of that opinion, please say aye. Contrary, no. The motion carried. Thank you very much. Councillors, any items you can see? I think the Director of Administration Finance was paid street by three. We see that we're tracking not too badly in terms of rate collection. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor, considering they don't have rates uh, Yes, and that's something that I perhaps I'd like to update uh, uh, Council on, please. So if I had an email from the rates officer just late this afternoon and um, the IT issue has been fixed, but we'd already come up with the workaround. So the rates notice will be 
uh, thanks that I took in our boxes from next week. Every rate payer will have that in there explaining that they don't, the rate's not due to the 13th of September. Um, yes, yeah, so. and for businesses uh, who are on the two part school pricing. Previously, uh, the facilities and charges were their rates notice, so um, this year they're going to have a letter in there that says for this uh, installed only that those two figures need to be added together. They'll get a sewer notice and they'll get a rates notice, and the two figures have to be added together. But uh, yeah, it's written on both that you need to add the two together, so hopefully that makes sense to everybody. Thank you. Uh, just to help, I know. This um, place is, we seem to be experiencing so many problems that we've never experienced before, and obviously I'm saying that to the you know, state of bleeding obvious to you, but um, how, what, what assurances do we have that you know, this consistency is it's not going to be consistent at first? So through you, Mr Mayor, uh, in January, I think it was, we upgraded to the next version of Civica, uh, so it's actually 7.1, uh, and... This was the first time we tried to take it in 7 1 and the system just fell over and the support from Civic was terrible. Terrible. Um, I'm sure you've articulated that too. Yeah. Um, basically, radio silence. We would log calls and you know, send emails, make phone calls, and get the response. But we should know it's, it's not just a more shock for a lot of kids. So you haven't entertained the notion of us setting them out ourselves as in years gone by the stuff financially viable? Sorry. The rave notices of our So that's what the workaround was. We actually, we couldn't extract sewer charges for the business uh, rates. So we actually uh, manually did that ourselves, just it was 200 odd assessments. We did that at first, but we almost 3,000. We could levy the rates, but it was extracting the data out to, to populate the notes. That's where the system fell over. Okay, well, thank you very much uh, for that update. <laughs> at least we're aware of, uh, of what the situation is in that regard. So, uh, councillors, I see uh, that uh, there's a new chairman of the Springdale Progress Association. Is it you? Mr Buckley? Oh, yes, yes. He's <laughs> 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 left me hanging. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. Oh, no, it's just great to see. It's obviously... <laughs> He's obviously, you know, a, a committed uh, fellow to the to Maura Shire, but particularly in the Shipdale district. And good to see. Good to see. Anything further, councillors, in relation to uh, the information paper? If not, uh, if not, councillors in accordance with section 10A of the Local Government Act 1993 advise there are several matters be considered that are deemed confidential accordingly. I require a motion to have those matters considered. The Deputy Mayor, Councillor Slay, moved and seconded all those of that opinion. Please say aye. 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 Contrary, no. Fair the motion carried. Thank you. Closed session. Thank you, Mrs. Grant and Mrs. Bangalore. Could I please have a motion? Uh, to move the resolutions made from closed session into open session. Council McLaren, Council Winky, move and second. All those of that opinion, please say aye. Aye. Contrary, no. Clear the motion carried. Thank you. Uh, Council, I'd be pleased to receive a motion to proceed out of closed session. Councillor Slay, Councillor Smith, move and second. All those of that opinion, please say aye. aye. Contrary, no. Clear the motion is carried. Thank you. <coughs> Excuse me, we are uh, back in open council, so we, we're still filming. Very good. Advise uh, council that there were several resolutions 
that were resolved in closed session and uh, that the uh, council have resolved to bring into the open council meeting and those resolutions happen to be Uh, the first resolution is uh, on the motion of Councillor Winky and second Councillor Oliver, resolved that the reports be received in relation to the uh, minutes of the Emergency Management Committee meeting from the 5th of August 2020, and that was subsequently carried. Uh, and on the motion of Councillor Winky and second of Councillor Sinclair, it was resolved that the reports and recommendations as presented be adopted and carried. The minutes of the Confidential Assets and Operations Committee are from the 11th of August 2020. The Deputy Mayor moved the, the motion seconded by Councillor Winky that the reports be received and that was carried. Councillor Oliver and Councillor McLaren moved that Council continues with the current arrangements until the ownership of the property changes. There was an amendment put by Councillor Smith and Councillor Slade. Uh, that uh, it be moved that Council continue with the original agreement to be reviewed within and up to five years. The amendment was put and lost. The motion was then put and carried. Uh, on the motion of the Deputy Mayor, second of Councillor Oliver, it was resolved that the reports and recommendations that are presented be adopted and that was carried. Minutes of the Economic Development and Visitations Committee on the 11th of August 2020. A motion of Councillor Winky and Councillor Oliver it was resolved that the reports be received and that motion was carried. On the motion of Councillor McLaren and second of Councillor Smith, it was resolved that the reports and recommendations as presented be adopted and that motion was carried. Declaring a pecuniary interest for the General Manager's Annual Performance Review Report. Uh, the General Manager, Mr LaBelle, uh, Mrs. Elizabeth Smith, Mrs. Anne Rand, Mr. Rob Fisher, Mr. Chris Dunstan, Mr. Bimble Shah all left the meeting at 6.25 p.m. The General Manager's Annual Performance Review for period ending the 30th of June 2020. The motion of Councillor Smith and second of Council Oliver. It was resolved that Council notes the Mayor's report, which includes the General Manager's Performance Review Panel's position following the annual review for the 2019-2020 period and further that the general manager's total remuneration package be increased by 1.5 per cent and that motion was carried unanimously. And Mr Lavelle, Mrs Smith, Mrs Rands, Mr Fisher, Mr Dunstan and Mr Shah all returned to the meeting at 6.49 p.m. Uh, the request for water, uh, the resolution from Councillor Judd and Councillor Slade that council holds consultation with the Area Park Bowling Club seeking their views to access water from the railway dam. And that motion was carried. Uh, heavy vehicle route investigation, oh, I beg your pardon, the Joffrey Street, thank you. Uh, K and G correspondence, curb and guttering. On the motion of the Deputy Mayor, second of council, Oliver, it was resolved that council notes the request and that motion was carried. Heavy vehicle Route investigation. The Deputy Mayor moved and seconded by Councillor Winky. The Council include the text highlighted in red into the Transport for New South Wales work order. The motion is carried. Uh, sprayed bitumen surfacing. Uh, the motion of Councillor McLaren seconded the Deputy Mayor. It was resolved that Council award oral the sprayed bitumen surfacing services for one year starting from October 2020, when that motion was carried. On the motion of Councillor McLaren and second of Councillor Wink, it resolved that Council moves the motions from closed business into open Council. Uh, Councillor Slay and Councillor Smith move that we proceed out of closed session at 7.24pm and into open Council. That motion was carried. Thank you, Mr. Trent. Now can I please have a motion to adopt those confidential resolutions that are now in open. Councillor Slade, Councillor Oliver, move and second that all those of that opinion please say aye. 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 Aye.
information. No further business, councillors. I thank you very much. Prepare the meeting closed. And of course, uh, dinner is courtesy of the Shem Walk. <laughs> 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 and uh, I hope.